Welcome. The goal of this presentation is to give project managers and designers an introduction to using the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual. This presentation will familiarize the attendee with the different tools that have been developed to aid in the design, construction, and maintenance of green stormwater infrastructure projects. Throughout this presentation, we may use the terms green infrastructure or the acronym GSI when referring to green stormwater infrastructure. This presentation includes the steps that led to the development of the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual, the contents of the manual, an introduction to the Green Stormwater Infrastructure specifications, and some of the tools that were developed to aid in the use of those specifications. Early in the development of the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual, it was identified that there was an educational need to provide high-level understanding of what happens to stormwater when it rains. This included describing the sewer systems that manage stormwater and how and why green stormwater infrastructure is being prioritized as a stormwater management technique in the city. The story map is a general communication and education tool intended for use with the general public as well as city staff. It can be accessed at the following link and reviewed by rolling down or selecting from the tabs at the top right of the page. The story map begins with an overview of what happens to stormwater as it falls on our city and travels through the connected infrastructure of roads, inlets, and pipes. Green stormwater infrastructure is defined and examples of its potential impact on stormwater reduction are visually demonstrated. More detail on the various technical components that create the makeup of the green stormwater infrastructure are presented with a general explanation of the sizing and role based on the facility's location within the watershed. Maintenance needs and the city's current efforts to keep these facilities both functional and aesthetically pleasing are also discussed. Finally, several leading examples of green stormwater infrastructure facilities throughout the city are mapped, along with pictures and facts about the sites. Users are able to click through the different sites on the map to experience a virtual tour of green stormwater infrastructure in Kansas City. We encourage you to explore this link. The Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual goes beyond the basic information provided in the story map to provide an integrated citywide framework for green stormwater infrastructure design and construction guidance. It's important to note that the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual is not a replacement to the MARC Manual. The MARC Manual is focused on high level information and sizing guidance. The Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual gives more detailed guidance on design of the specific components required to build a green stormwater infrastructure facility. Detailed templates for components and the green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications are included. Both tools help the project go from a conceptual design to detailed design, construction, establishment, and long-term maintenance. The Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual lends consistency to the design process and construction criteria. It improves the quality control on green stormwater infrastructure projects. The manual provides the tools to better aid the city in meeting their water quality regulations, such as the city's MS4 permit and the combined sewer overflows consent decree requirements. The following is the general outline or table of contents for the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual. The introduction provides an overview of the manual, breaking down what is included in each of the following sections, when each is applicable, and how each section is intended to be used. The GSI Component Design Guidelines and Details section is broken into nine categories of green stormwater infrastructure components, with a design deliverable checklist and comments that reflect lessons learned on past projects. Also included is a standard detailed template for each component, shown later in these slides. 
The Establishment and Maintenance section provides a description of standard maintenance tasks with example photos and metrics for evaluating maintenance performance. The appendices in the manual provide the tools intended for use by the designer and contractor on developing contract documents. This includes a recommended plant list, the set of green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications, and instructions and tools for using the site activity plan. The site activity plan is a newer specification requirement specific to green stormwater infrastructure projects. The manual is structured and organized around green stormwater infrastructure components, or what we like to call the building blocks of green stormwater infrastructure. While each design is very site specific, there are features of the green stormwater infrastructure that are common between different sizes, location, and types of green stormwater infrastructure facilities. These features are designed to bring stormwater in and out of the facility, protect the green stormwater infrastructure, and promote its overall function. Standardizing the components that are similar between many sites starts to build consistency for better functioning green stormwater infrastructure systems. The nine standard component categories are listed here. A further breakdown of different types of individual components falls under each category. The categories include inlets, which are collection points for stormwater. Inlets range from an opening in the curb line to a traditional inlet. Energy dissipation and pretreatment components decrease the velocity of stormwater. This helps to prevent erosion and scouring of surface materials and to collect sediment, trash, and debris. Above grade barriers provide physical or visual barriers at the edge of the green stormwater infrastructure facility. Permeable pavement is a pavement that allows stormwater to pass through the surface or joints. Soil and aggregate media can provide storage and filtration, allowing stormwater to move within the green stormwater infrastructure facility. An outlet provides a discharge point for excess stormwater, allowing it to leave the green stormwater infrastructure facility. Landscaping includes the plant material that provides functional and aesthetic benefits to the green stormwater infrastructure. Piping encompasses types of underdrain, conveyance, access, and observation piping you may encounter in a green stormwater infrastructure facility. Media liners provide stabilization or separation within and around green stormwater infrastructure sections. The cover page for each component provides a short definition and photo example. On this page, a design deliverable checklist is provided to outline the minimum required information that should be included in construction documents for this component. This checklist should be used by designers before submittals and by project managers receiving construction documents as part of their review process. Each design component has an associated guideline. The guideline includes a standard description of the component, where it is appropriate, or in some cases not appropriate, for use, and a list of other design considerations. While these design considerations are classified as guidance and not criteria, Note that these considerations were developed from lessons learned on previously constructed green stormwater infrastructure projects. As the institutional knowledge of green stormwater infrastructure grows, it's important to learn from past experiences to continually improve. For each component, a template detail is provided. The word template is used because these are not standard details to be pasted onto design plans as is. Instead, this detail provides a standardized starting point for the green stormwater infrastructure component details. Each detailed template identifies the minimum required information that should be provided on the construction documents. It is the responsibility of the designer to consider the applicability and constructability of the component relative to their site and to update the bracketed information highlighted here accordingly. It's also important to remember that these detail templates are intended to work with and not replace local standards. For each component, several photographs are provided. 
illustrating the component used in different settings or variations of design. The intent is to provide a visual description of the components in their application setting. The designer should see these as simply examples of what has been done before. It's important to remember that the function of green stormwater infrastructure is directly dependent on regular effective maintenance. The green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications define requirements for service levels of performance standards. These are maintenance standards that should be met during the establishment period. These are generalized into three overall categories, appearance, weeds and pests, and erosion and drainage. Rating indices for litter, appearance, and function with photo examples of four rating options are included to provide additional clarification regarding maintenance expectations. The manual then provides a list of standard maintenance tasks to be performed based on the green stormwater infrastructure component types used on the project. Photo examples are included, often providing examples of what is considered good and bad. General guidelines regarding frequency of each task is also included. Because maintenance needs vary greatly by site and surrounding conditions, it is important to note that these frequencies are intended to be starting points. The contractor is required to adjust the maintenance frequencies as needed based on meeting the required service levels of performance standards. Lastly, a section is provided on troubleshooting recurring or larger maintenance issues that may arise on a project that go above and beyond standard preventative maintenance tasks. This is another area where lessons learned on past projects can help the user walk through the troubleshooting process as it could be applied to their green stormwater infrastructure site. The Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual Appendices include more detailed design and construction tools. Appendix A includes a recommended GSI plant list and characteristics. This plant list serves as a general guidance based on past successes and lessons learned related to plant health. The recommendations are organized into three categories, trees, shrubs, grasses, perennials, and ground covers. Each category includes a table with the plant ID code that should be used on the landscaping design plan, both the botanical and common names, as well as some pertinent design information related to the site setting in which the plant tends to thrive. Also included is an example photo of each plant that can be used for reference in communicating between the design team, the project manager, and the public. This list is not meant to be exhaustive, restrictive, or to replace the need for detailed design by a landscape architect. It is intended to serve as a resource to communicate what has worked locally in the past and where those types of plants integrate into the overall grading and site design plans. The most substantial component of the appendices is the green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications included in Appendix C. Through the design and construction process of the green stormwater infrastructure projects completed to date, the need for these construction specifications was identified. These specifications help build consistency across green stormwater infrastructure projects. In order to address consistency, a construction specification was developed for each green stormwater infrastructure component included in the manual. These are intended for use as supplemental technical specifications on any project incorporating green stormwater infrastructure to provide a consistent baseline. In addition to the green stormwater infrastructure component sections shown on the right, there are five general sections that cover key requirements specific to successful green stormwater infrastructure construction. The site activity plan requires the contractor to thoroughly plan construction sequencing, site preparation, stormwater control, installation, stabilization, and establishment as it relates to the green stormwater infrastructure facilities. Control and protection addresses protection of the green stormwater infrastructure during construction processes. 
the primary mode of failure of green stormwater infrastructure is due to lack of protection from construction activities after components have been installed. This applies typical erosion and sediment control measures to manage runoff within a site. Earthwork covers site preparation, excavation, and grading requirements that are unique to green stormwater infrastructure. This is primarily focused on protection from compaction within the extents of the green stormwater infrastructure facilities. In situ infiltration testing provides requirements for infiltration testing both before and after construction of the green stormwater infrastructure. This is a key performance measure to validate function of the facility. Establishment requires protection and maintenance of the green stormwater infrastructure components from the time they are installed through the end of the contractual correction period. This section outlines the minimum levels of maintenance, service performance expectations, and holds the contractor responsible for meeting those standards. All the green stormwater infrastructure specifications include decision points designated by brackets throughout each section. This allows the designer to tailor the specification to their project specific needs. This also allows the city to standardize key parameters of each specification, while still allowing for flexibility to meet the needs and nature of green stormwater infrastructure design variability. Within each green stormwater infrastructure specification, the same outline was used to create consistency of where to find specific types of information. Part one focuses on the pre-construction considerations, such as submittals, QAQC, and storage and handling procedures. Part two covers all the materials required to build each component, allowing the designer to use decision points to remove non-applicable materials. This part is component and specification specific. Part three includes requirements related to actual construction of the component, as well as required maintenance, post-construction testing, and warranty considerations. Specs and TAC software was used to develop the green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications to provide efficiency and automation. Specs and TAC is a free, NASA developed software that includes some key automation features to save designers and project managers time in developing and redeveloping technical specifications. The software pulls in the baseline green stormwater infrastructure specifications, then allows designers to tailor these to their project. The software guides the designer through each defined bracketed decision point to easily walk them through the portions of the specification that are meant to be design or project specific. Redlining features track changes made to allow for easy review of what has been updated from the baseline. The software also has a built-in QAQC verification process that allows for automatic updates to numbering and references within the specifications. Lastly, a series of output reports are available that flag potential conflicts or errors between references within the specification and even summarizes all submittal requirements included for the project. For additional information on how to use the SPECS Intact software, please see the SPECS Intact training presentation. Because the site activity plan specification is a new concept for construction projects, some additional tools were developed to streamline the development of the site activity plan for both designers and contractors. Appendix B includes both Excel form templates to meet site activity plan requirements, as well as detailed instructions on how to use them. The site activity plan is a collection of standardized forms that set schedule, material, and site use expectations for construction. These forms are to be used by both the designer and the contractor at various stages of the project. The designer is responsible for filling in all project and site specific information in the required forms. Once this information is complete, the form should be saved as a PDF and the PDF added as an attachment to specification 02937 site activity plan 
to be included with the contract documents. The contractor then uses and updates these forms throughout construction to meet the site activity plan requirements. The following slides and short videos walk the user through these forms. On each form, there is instruction to designers and contractors text highlighted in dark blue and shown to the right on this first form. Also throughout, fields that are intended to be filled in by the contractor are highlighted in light blue. The designer fills in all project and design specific information during the design phase of the project. The contractor then fills in the highlighted blue fields, updating as needed throughout the construction process. The first tab in the form is the overview for the project's green stormwater infrastructure sites and components. Generally, the designer inputs the project, green stormwater infrastructure site, and green stormwater infrastructure component specific information about that project that will be used throughout the remaining forms of the site activity plan. We'll walk through these in more detail with a video example on the next slide. The designer should fill in the project title and project number. For GSI location, fill in the name or site designation and location description. These should be unique and reflect the site identified and location on the plans. The site names will also auto-populate the fields on the remaining form tabs. Under GSI type, select from the drop-down menu. Each type is described in the Approaching Green Infrastructure Design section of the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual if more context is needed. These type designations are part of an effort to standardize how green stormwater infrastructure assets are managed in the asset management system long term. Next, applicable green stormwater infrastructure components are selected. On this project, only seven of the nine standard components are used. To prepare the form to print to PDF, the designer deleted remaining red italicized text. Tab 2 creates the template for the green stormwater infrastructure specific construction schedule. During previous green stormwater infrastructure projects, it was noted that the construction schedule submitted with each pay application did not go into significant detail on the construction and phasing of green stormwater infrastructure components. Oftentimes, these components are time or season sensitive and become critical path items that cause unforeseen schedule delays during construction. It requires detailed planning at the beginning of and during construction. This form allows the designer to list out the components on the project and requires the contractor cons to consider timing and phasing of the green stormwater infrastructure construction as it relates to the procurement and the overall project schedule. This can also be built into a scheduling software program if desired by the project manager. It gives the design and construction team the opportunity to identify potential issues with planned timing and placement of green stormwater infrastructure components and material. The following slide provides a video example on how to use this form. On this tab, all the GSI sites that were input on tab one pre-populate the GSI sites column. For the GSI component category, the designer should use the drop-down list to select the applicable components for each GSI site. The drop-down options here are also pre-populated from the components selected on tab one. If any components are missing from this list and need to be added, the designer should go back to tab one to make sure the selection box is marked. For each component, provide a brief description of the component at the site, making sure to use the same names or terminology used on the plans. Once done, use the filter option to remove any unused rows. Then the designer should delete the red italicized text prior to printing the PDF. The contractor will use the same form and be responsible for filling in the procurement and planned installation date information in the remaining blue columns. 
This also helps to identify components that may have longer lead times than others before they become a schedule delay issue. The intent of this form is to be updated monthly as needed during the construction process. The third tab is intended to get the contractor thinking about the maintenance needs of the green stormwater infrastructure components early in the construction process. The green stormwater infrastructure specifications require that the contractor start maintaining and protecting each component when it is installed. This means that for projects with multiple green stormwater infrastructure sites or a long construction schedule, there may be components that require maintenance before construction is complete. It also requires the contractor to input their intended maintenance frequencies and designate who, whether prime or subcontractor, is ultimately responsible for completing the maintenance. The next slide walks through an example of filling out this form. The designer should first expand the drop-down list in the GSI component cell and uncheck the components that are not applicable to the project, referencing the pre-populated list on the right. Next, the designer should review the list of the required tasks and unselect those that are not applicable. Next, the designer should input the GSI sites that include each component, again, referencing the pre-populated list to the right. Once complete and ready to PDF, the designer should filter the list to hide any blank rows and delete the red italicized text. There are also blank cells at the bottom for the designer to add additional maintenance tasks for any specialty products or components outside the standard green stormwater infrastructure component list. The frequency column inputs are shown for reference only here and should be deleted prior to printing to PDF. The contractor should update the frequency and responsible party. The responsible party field is particularly useful if the subcontractors will be used for certain portions of the work. The frequency can then be updated throughout the course of the construction and establishment period if the site conditions allow for more or less frequent maintenance of certain items. This ultimately holds the contractor responsible for setting the frequency needed to meet the required service levels of performance defined in the specifications. Tab four is the final form required in the site activity plan. It outlines the experience requirements for each green stormwater infrastructure component specification for the project's quality assurance. The city standard front ends already require the prime contractor to submit similar qualifications and references for the project as a whole. However, the front ends do not require a listing of the contractor's entire subcontractor team. This form offers transparency to the city to understand who is responsible for what green stormwater infrastructure specific construction and to verify that they meet the necessary experience requirements to provide a high quality finished product. The designer should select the project's applicable green stormwater infrastructure specifications from the drop down in the first column. These selections should match the project manual table of contents. They may also add additional project specific requirements as necessary. The contractor again fills out all remaining blue highlighted columns. The site activity plan is intended to be submitted monthly by the contractor along with their project schedule and invoices. As schedules and project needs change throughout construction, the contractor should update these forms accordingly using the form fields highlighted in blue. Tabs five through 10 in the site activity plan are optional forms for the contractor's use to document maintenance activities, broken out by frequency of the tasks. The frequency columns are populated by the contractor's input frequencies on tab three, GSI maintenance schedule, and can be filtered by the min annual frequency column. 
a separate maintenance sheet should be used for each green stormwater infrastructure site. The date, the inspector and or maintenance supervisor and the green stormwater infrastructure site name should be documented. When filling in the form, the contractor should refer to the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Manual for appearance and function ratings and record both a before and after rating. Once the maintenance tasks at the site are complete, the total cumulative hours for the crew should be recorded. For instance, if two workers are at the site for 30 minutes, one hour should be recorded. Since these forms are optional, there may be some projects where computerized maintenance management systems are used to track these activities. To finish up, here's a quick summary of the green stormwater infrastructure resources we presented today. All resources are available on the KC Water website under Programs and Green Stormwater Infrastructure. At this location, you can also find the editable tools ready to tailor to your project. This includes Excel versions of the site activity plan template forms, PDF and CAD versions of the green stormwater infrastructure details, specs intact version of the green stormwater infrastructure construction specifications. Please see the training, introduction to using the green stormwater infrastructure specifications, specs intact software for detailed instructions on how to download, load, and edit the green stormwater infrastructure specifications for your project. Thanks for your time and consideration in utilizing the tools to improve green stormwater infrastructure design, construction, and implementation.